Welcome back to another edition of Backstage Pass. I'm Rudy Castillo. And I'm Baroni Suero. We hope you enjoy the show. Your breaking news. 700 protesters arrested after marching in thick rows on the Brooklyn Bridge sidewalk to continue fighting for their rights. They have been camped out in Manhattan's finance district for nearly two weeks with several marches. As posted on their website, Occupy Wall Street is a leaderless resistance movement with people of many colors, genders, and political persuasion. The one thing we all have in common is that we are that 99% that will no longer tolerate the greed and corruption of the 1% of the corporate world. Word around teen school hallways, sets teen, is the new intercourse in this technologic driven society. The state of Florida bans teen sets teen with a new state law as of Saturday, October 1st. The old law will require any teen to register as a sex offender and charged with a felony. However, the new law softens the punishment for teen offenders. First offenders will be charged a $60 fine or commitment to eight hours of community service. Repeat offenders are looking at first degree misdemeanor or even felony charges with third time offenders. This is Top Music. And now it's time to lighten up the mood with our top 10 music list. I'm Melissa Gonzalez. Positioned at our number 10 spot is Sexy I Know It, which was number 25 on last week, so that's a major jump there. Number 9, You Make Me Feel by Cobra Starship, moving down two spots since last week. Number 8, You and I by Lady Gaga, which seems to be moving back up on the charts. Number 7, Cheers by Rihanna. Number 6, we have Lighters by Bad Meets Evil. And staying in our, in our five spot is Stereo Hearts by Gym Class Heroes. Number four would be Party Rock Anthem by LMFAO. And now the top three on our charts are number three, Pumped Up Kicks by Foster the People. Number two, Someone Like You by Adele. And our number one, which is not a surprise here, is Moves Like Jagger by Maroon 5 and Christina Aguilera. To learn more, follow me at Mellystars23 or tweet us at underscore backstage underscore pass. And now stay tuned for some more entertainment news. Here again, Backstage Pass has the latest news on the Conrad Murray trial. The manslaughter trial against the late king of pop, Michael Jackson's Dr. Conrad Murray, begins the second week with prosecutors furthering their investigation of that day, June 25, 2009. Murray failed to call 911 upon entering Michael Jackson's bedroom and seeing him lifeless. Murray was paid $150,000 a month to serve as his personal physician, as claimed Dr. Conrad Murray performed best chest compressions to Michael Jackson on his bed as he attempted to revive him. During the first week of proceedings, prosecutors questioned witnesses, including Kenny Ortega, the director of what would have been Michael Jackson's This Is It tour. Audio recordings were presented of the late Jackson slurring words and rambling as Conrad Murray recorded it with his phone. Here we have an example just for you. When people believe in this show, when people believe my show, I want to say, I've never seen nothing like this in my life. Go, go. I've never seen nothing like this. Go. It, it, it's amazing. He's the greatest entertainer in the world. I'm taking that money. I'm very children. Children. The biggest in the world. My Days after this recording, Maury bought 25 more of 20 milliliters of propofol. Other emails and recordings will be presented during the trial within the coming weeks. It has been said that Jackson gave himself lethal dosage of drugs, including propofol, that ultimately led to his death, all under Dr. Kurt, Dr. Conrad Murray's care. However, the Los Angeles Police Department stated that 
Michael Jackson's fingerprints were not found on any propofol bottles or lorazepam bottles. The day of Jackson's death, Dr. Rochelle Cooper, first ER doctor to attend to Michael Jackson, states that Maury only claimed that he had administered 4 milligrams of lorazepam and failed to mention propofol. She also claims that for that one hour and 13 minutes she treated Jackson, she never felt a pulse. Attorneys showed jurors a photo of a lifeless Jackson on a gurney as he arrived to the hospital. A verdict will be declared in the near future if convicted, Conrad Murray will be charged with four years behind bars and the loss of his medical license. Just like we promised, here are the tweets from last week's post on your best experience in St. Thomas University. Green Escarate, my senior season as an STU tennis player last semester. We will never forget it, especially senior day, playing Tufts University. Christian Lopez, I have, to men I have too many memories in St. Thomas University, but I love the friendships I built in athletics as well as in my classroom. Ivan Sotomayor, my best memory at St. Thomas will be the teachers, Dr. Philip Shepardson, Dr. Marcela Moyano, and Dr. Andrea Campbell, and how I was late in Dr. Moyano's ADM class, the parties at my dorm, and winning in everything. Javier Palacios being introduced to Carlos de Yarza. Time is up. Unfortunately, the show has come to an end. Just remember, we're the last page to your past. Thank you.